Odlični podcasti, misli se lida. In this episode, I will bring to you Asa Yarskog, a Swedish dear friend of mine, through a Skype interview with her. Before I go directly to the interview, let me explain this choice to you. So, who is Asa? And why do I think anyone could profit from getting to know her? Asa Yarskog has an MBA from Lund University and the Col Superior de Commerce de Paris and more than 25 years working experience within the business and the leadership development in over in more than 50 countries in the five continents. A skilled trainer and certified coach and a much demanded mentor working with prominent leaders throughout the world. She is at the moment the CEO of Global Leadership for Sustainable Development and President of the Swedish Southern American Chamber of Commerce. Asa has worked with prominent leaders such as Dalai Lama, Kofi Annan, Klaus Schwab, Nelson Mandela, and so many others. So without further ado, here is the interview. Enjoy it. Hello, Asa. Hi. Hi. Good morning again. Hi. <laughs> morning again how are you i'm fine it's a good to have you and i'm so thrilled to have the interview together in this podcast all we talk about is about the workplace and how people can give their best when they work and in your work experience you have had this experience with prominent leaders such as dalai lama kofi annan klaus schwab and nelson mandela just to mention some and uh, because I know that uh, we learn from these people, we all, and we have learned by watching them in just different uh, interviews or who has been lucky to be in conferences with them, but you have worked with them. So if I would ask you, please, to just mention one lesson you've had from each of them that you want to share with well, I think I have learned from all the people I have worked with, not only these famous people, because uh, uh, every every leader who has gone through some things in their life and have managed to use that experience in order to develop themselves, uh, have something to share. And I think the trick is to listen to what they have to share. Uh, when it comes to these people, I think all the great leaders that I meet uh, they have one thing in common, and um, and that has by inspired me a lot. Uh, I think they are all very disciplined in uh, in keeping their physical and mental health through uh, exercise, through the right kind of food, uh, uh, avoiding too uh, to- toxic food and drinks. Uh, through uh, meditation also for their mental health and recreation and love. And I think that has inspired me a lot, uh, inspired me a lot as a leader. And that's something I want to share with other leaders. And I try to share with other leaders that we need to be disciplined, both when it comes to our, our temples, our bodies and our minds. Yeah. I see. So it's like if is anything in particular to each of them. So I, I guess what you said, the last one, maybe it's for the Dalai Lama. But what happens, for say, with Kofi Annan? I think they have all been so different in a way. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think Kofi Annan, he came into an organization that was very, very built on hierarchy and bureaucratic. And uh, a lot of politics was running around in that organization. The UN, I've worked 10 years for the UN, and I know it's a very, very uh, bureaucratic organization. And that if you have power in that organization, it's very difficult to to, to challenge people with power. And he really spent, I mean, I wish he had been given more time to change the values of the organization because he turned it around and talked about what are our values. For instance, he was brave enough when there was a person who was very, very high up in the organization who was actually 
uh, accused for sexual harassment and they did the due diligence and they realized that this person had behaved in a in a it, it mm -hmm. had not been in the balance of the organization Kofi Annan just said it doesn't matter how powerful you are it's all about values and the person had to go uh, and I think so he would see all the people in the organization through the same lens of values whether they were cleaning you know the floor or they were actually uh, uh, very high up in the organization so values is something that I bring with me in the values based leadership when it comes to Nelson Mandela I mean, uh, and we know that we do have a deal. It doesn't mean that I am stupid and gullible, but if I can actually <laughs> develop my trust in people, uh, I can make them, uh, I, I will not lose time. And in organizations, if you want people to be innovative, you must trust them. You must allow them to make mistakes because you're spending your time controlling them they will never become innovative and they will never be happy. Yeah, get it. Uh, and then when you're saying that by using your subconscious wisdom, you can reach goals in your business or in your organization, what do you mean? What I mean is that we, we use our skills and our personalities when, uh, and various tools as leaders but sometimes we need to solve problems that we have never been in front of before. And we cannot solve new problems with old solutions. So we must find another source of wisdom. What I do in the sessions is that I will help the people that come to the session to access that treasure of wisdom that we all have within us. Asa, I, from the time I know you, I have been really blessed. And you know this, I've told you this. <laughs> and actually the first is it's because you have a way of really demystifying strategy and leadership and making it real and making it practical and making it have a vision and at the same time have a day-to-day -day, uh, list of activities. And it's people like when they get to know you, they will see they will get to another level of how they can best lead themselves, have a wonderful life, mm -hmm. and at the same time be more efficient in what they do. Is this really what is behind what you do in your life, or am I wrong somewhere? Oh, I, I like the way you put it. <laughs> Thank you, Alida. Uh, the Asa land. Uh, well, I think um, a lot of people out there Try, tend to complicate things that are quite simple and they, they tend to start with the details and um, I mean I have my MBA, I have been working in various UN organizations, various companies, I met a lot of people from various countries and I, I just think that if we make it more simple and start with a helicopter view before we go into the details, before we go into the to-do list then we have a greater understanding about what we really want to achieve. Um, my life has given me many lessons and, uh, and has helped me to develop my inner compass. And this is what I want to help other people to do, to, to, to discover their own, own inner compass so that they can lead and their life and work without, you know, unnecessary transaction costs, unnecessary stress, unnecessary conflicts with others and with themselves, but rather live in harmony and feel that they have, uh, they're living their way in an authentic way. And uh, it's amazing how much more efficient and effective you become where you don't waste time thinking what is this the right thing to do when you when you have that straight highway to your inner compass so that's what i want to help help you build that straight highway to your inner compass and asa i want to thank you on behalf of everyone that is listening thank you very much for this interview thank you Ida. thank you thank you okay. bye